Hello everyone, welcome back. A bit of echo. Let's maybe talk in one microphone instead. Um, with now we have a new presentation or speech, uh, if you want to call it, from uh, my dear friend Alicia from Poland. For do, those who do not know her, she has been one of the most prominent activists in Poland uh, fighting against the decision of the LGBTIQ freedom zones. Lovely, freedom. free zone, pardon, pardon, because here we have signs with freedom zones, so that's why I'm often confused. Um, indeed, so I met Alicia for the first time three years ago, yeah, just before, four, four years already, oh my god, time flies uh, with, with COVID in between, um, but like it was one of the best nights, I, I can say, so it is my absolute pleasure that, that, we couldn't, <laughs> that we could get her here, so with that Alicia, the floor is yours. Um, hello everyone. Okay, I will do like that. Um, I wasn't planned um, beginning to look like, will look like, um, but some crazy things happened last night. So, as you, um, some of you may know, um, Air, Air um, Lines lost my luggage. So that's why I look like that. Um, then, uh, me and my girlfriend had a huge fight, so I hadn't had much sleep. Um, and that's why I, I think I want to start with, um, not this, just with a story, personal story about fear. Um, because I, I have here most of, um, like, basic facts from Polish law, from um, the situations of um, activists and pride and some of LGBT free zones, but I think um, most of you um, know it. Um, about fear. I realized um, just a month or two months ago that um, we have got used to homophobia in Poland um, so deep that um, we don't even um, see it now. I mean, um, I was in a... Um, I had a walk with my girlfriend at night, and um, she hadn't have uh, been in um, same-sex relationship before, and um, we were going through some streets, and I, um, by the hand, um, so in some situation, I was like, okay, not now, and she was like, what's wrong? don't you like me? Um, then um, she asked me why I kissed her with open eyes, so I realized I have to um, I have to tell the, her everything about being in same-sex relationship because um, she didn't know anything before. I so I will I I told her that I, I'm kissing her with open eyes because I'm not sure if um, someone could come and, and, and shout on us or spit on us or do something even worse. So I have to be, you know, everywhere focused on environment. Uh, and we can't hold hands everywhere because it's too dangerous. Mm. Sometimes we shouldn't um, say like we um, we have been on some vacation um, and we uh, got to reception um, to to check into the room and I was like the room for me and my friend because I was just afraid that um, something would went wrong. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's unexpected uh, beginning of the story, unexpected for me. So let's get to um, to the whole situation in Poland. And um, main fact is, um, according to Ilka Europe 2021 report, the status of LGBTQ rights in Poland is the worst among European Union countries. And maybe that's why I'm here to tell you a little bit more about it. And a majority of the Polish population is affiliated to, um, with, with the Catholic Church. And as such, public perception and acceptance to the LGBTQI community are strongly influenced by the Catholic moral doctrines. The current situation, as we all know, is terrible. After the presidential elections a couple of years ago, many people no longer see any hope. They just leave country. Mm, and it's no surprise because public television is subordinate to the right wing ruling party. So the mat material in it is hypocritical and manipulated. People have a very curved picture of reality. And the discussion about the LGBTQIA community is still present. Actually, I should say LGBT ideology, as they do this. Because um, they don't think of us as people. They piss on us at very every possible opportunity. So let's begin with Polish law, discrimination law. Polish law bans employment discrimination based on sexual orientation. And that's the end of good news. And the Polish constitution guarantees equality in accordance with the law and prohibits discrimination based on any reason. The proposal to include a prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation in the Constitution was rejected in 1995 after strong Catholic Church objections. And now some stories due to that. In June 2018, the Polish Supreme Court ruled that a printer from Łódź acted illegally when he refused to print banners for an LGBT business group. Um, the court argued that the principle of equality meant the printer did not have the right to withhold services from the business. The court also ruled that sexual orientation, race, or other features of a person cannot be the basis for refusal to offer a service, but that freedom of conscience and religion must also be taken into account. And now the better one. In July 2020, the government of Poland sued IKEA for firing an employee for several homophobic remarks he made on the company's internal website. Poland's Justice Ministry Zbigniew Ziobro called the dismissal with which was made in accordance with Poland's anti-discrimination laws absolutely scandalous. The Polish Ministry of Justice is founding a campaign for counteracting crimes related to the violation of freedom of conscience committed under the influence of LGBT ideology, which is meant to protect people who suffer under the pressure of new leftist ideologies. That's what it looked like in Polish. Um, and the same-sex couples um, rights there is no legal recognition of same-sex couple, couples in, um, in Poland. Mm, we, can, we, we have the right not to testify against the partner and residency rights under EU law somehow. Um, same-sex marriage is not recognized and Article 18 of the Constitution of Poland states that marriage being a union of a man and a woman, as well as the family, motherhood, and parenthood, shall be placed under the protection and care of the Republic of Poland. And this has led to much debate over whether or not is, it is a 
definitive ban on same-sex marriage. A ruling in 2019 from an administrative court concluded that the language in Article 18 does not explicitly ban same-sex marriage. A civil union bill was first proposed in 2003. In 2004, under a left-wing government, the Senate approved the bill allowing same-sex couples to register their relationship. Um, parties to a civil union under the bill would have been given a great range of benefits, protections and responsibilities, e.g. pension funds, joint tax and death-related benefits currently granted only to spouses in a marriage, although they would not have been allowed to adopt children. Surprise, surprise, the bill lapsed in 2005 general elections, however. In June 2018, the European Court of Justice ruled that EU member states must grant married same-sex couples, where at least one partner is a US citizen, EU, full residency rights and recognize their freedom of movement, was obviously not respected in Poland. Same-sex couples are unable, again, obviously, to legally adopt in Poland. Furthermore, Lesbian couples do not have access to in vitro. Yes. Um, I think we are tired right now, so maybe something, something positive, but don't get used to it. In October 2018, the Supreme Administrative Court ruled that a lesbian couple may register their um, four-year-old boy as their child and then Polish media described the case as the first of its kind in Poland. So we had a quick, great journey. Um, let's get back. In July 2020, the president of Poland formally proposed an amendment to the constitution that would ban adop adoption by a person in a same-sex relationship. And in November 2020, a law was proposed to only allow married couple to adopt, and this will make it impossible for same-sex couples to adopt due to same-sex marriage not being allowed in Poland. And unfortunately, demonstrations were unable to hold that time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Trans rights. Legal gender changes have been performed since the 1960s. Transgender people seeking to change their legal gender must receive a medical diagnosis. Only after the legal gender has been changed, a transgender individual gets a right to undergo a sex resentment surgery. The reason for this is because any surgery resulting in infertility is prohibited by Polish law. That is, Castration on request is illegally, and transgender individual must first seek a legal change, since just a medical diagnosis from a doctor is not enough. Um, a transgender individual must face a number of obstacles before having their legal gender changed, such as, attention, suing their parents and on the basis of offered further evidence, such as medical diagnosis, medical records, witness, parental statements, a court may either pass sentence or ref refuse to do so, still. Um, so yeah, heavy beginning with, with facts about Polish law. If you have any questions, I don't know if we can do this right now or after maybe after. Um, so I will go to Pride's demonstrations and activist situation. It's only since 1990 that we can really talk about the LGBTQIA movement in Poland when the first official gay and lesbian rights um, organization called Lambda was registered. The Equality Parade marched through the streets of Warsaw since 2001, when I was born. 
<laughs> a small demonstration at first with time has grown into the most important celebration of equality, diversity, and acceptance. And there were about 100,000 participants this year. Um, from 2001, public marches have become the main political, political tool of the LGBTQIA movement. Um, events such as the equality, equality Parade in Warsaw, March of Tolerance in Krakow, and March of Equality in Poznań are organized on a regu uh, regular basis. In 2005, the March of Equality was banned by city authorities and the participants of the illegal demonstration were brutally treated by the police. And this event was followed by a number of rallies in support of the march called the Equality, Pari the Equality March Goes On. Now for for several years, the situation of Pride organizers is um, pretty difficult. 2018, the Equality March in Lublin, my city, is banned by the city's mayor five days before it's um, scheduled to take place. The case is referred to the regional court where the ban is upheld the ban is lifted by the Court of Appeal on October 12th, and it's one day before the planned march. This was the first ban on, a, uh, on an equality march for years. Unfortunately, the mayors of other cities were inspired by and the mayor of, of Lublin, and more and more marches were, were banned after that. So um, first Lublin Equality March started with insults, hateful shouts. A few days before the march, local politicians also spoke negatively about the event. So the counter demonstrators felt, you know, like support, um, consent to violence. Even before the march started, they threw firecrackers. There were bang and smoke everywhere. And I remember it very well because it was, you know, I was 17. It was my first, um, my, my first uh, march which I organized. And I remember that um, when we were at the starting point, and as, as I told you, um, there were smoke everywhere, so I couldn't see anything. I, I could only hear something, and I remember crying children, crying adults, um, just, you know, um, homophobic shots, and, and, terrifying screaming of participants of, um, of the march. And later, during the, the march, um, they threw eggs, tomatoes, stones, firecrackers, even chairs. And fortunately, I think because of some miracle, nothing serious happened to anyone but you know it was um it was traumatic and it was even worse in Białystok i was in a wheelchair then because my leg was broken and um i remember that there were some troubles with with the starting point we didn't exactly know where should we go um so we choose um like the place which we um, expected to be like for sure this one it wasn't and it was the big round square and we and when we got there it was me my um, girlfriend at the time um, two of my friends and two journalists 
just us on, on this square, around us police cordon and three or four thousand counter demonstrators, just hooligans. And obviously they chose me as their main target because, you know, I couldn't escape. I was in a wheelchair. So they threw about 10 firecrackers right at me and it was the first time in my life when I, when I felt like, uh, I don't know if I will be alive tomorrow or my friends. Um, so yeah. Um, it was traumatic. Whereas the second equality march in Lublin took place quite calmly, the police did their job very well. They did not allow hooligans to attack, but there was a couple who wanted to make a bombing. It was an actual bombing attempt. They did not succeed, but this message had a strong impact on our psych, my psych, other organizers' psych. And the worst part of it is that these people only got one year or even nine or ten months in prison. So if we were to march next year after that, they could come and do exactly the same. And as far as I know, these were um, the three loudest events in our LGBTQI community bubble um, that year. In 2019, oh my God, this was a year. I just realized. Um, 2019, on the streets of many Polish cities appears a van with a banner saying what the LGBT lobby wants to teach kids. Masturbation, consenting to sex, first sexual experience and orgasm. Stop pedophilia. Similar slogans can be heard from the speakers on a car. An activist in protest began um, blocking vans so they can't, um, could not spread the disgusting fake news further. Um, one of them, the most popular of them because of, of what happened, Margot, uh, in 2020 she was arrested for the first time for her involvement in the distractions of one of the homophobic vans. In total, she, was, she has been arrested three or four times and once for two months. Also, she had no access to a lawyer for some time. And um, somehow it was a um, spectacular moment for our community in Poland because it was the first time during COVID pandemic, um, COVID-19 pandemic, when we all got together and stand out, demonstrate, protest. And um, demonstrations were held across Poland, opposing police brutality and in support of Margot. And they were incredible. Yeah. But going back to 2019, marches across Poland continue to be blocked or banned. Mm, and a documentary is aired on public TV ahead of Sunday election entitled LGBT Invasion. The documentary claims that LGBT people are paid by foreign NGOs to march in equality marches. Quote, who and for what purpose finances LGBT marches? The documentary asks. What methods and sources of funding do they have? How does the LGBT invasion work? Fun fact, they even used 
my image in the trailer, but in the film I no longer appeared, I, unfortunately. Um, next year, 2020, um, Wrocław Court rules that campaign uh, linking LGBT and pedophilia is informative and educational. The campaign run by ultra-conservative NGO Fundacja Pro drives one through city centers broadcasting slogans warning that the LGBT lobby wants to teach children and stop pedophilia with a logo showing a crossed out rainbow flag. And then as part of presidential election campaign, Polish President Andrzej Duda publicly signs the family charter where among other things, he commits to defending the institution of marriage which means no acceptance for same-sex marriages, not giving his upset acceptance for adoption of children by, by same-sex couples and protecting children and the family from so-called LGBT ideology, which he described as a foreign ideology worse than communism, and which he vowed to legally ban in public institutions. He was re-elected right later. 2021, the Ministry of Education, Przemysław Czarnek, said Poland should copy Hungary's anti-LGBT propaganda legislation. And then the Stop LGBT Bill appears, proposed Stop LGBT Bill, which would ban pride marches and other LGBTI gatherings. Amnesty International warned that signing the citizens' initiative into law would put the rights of LGBTI people in Poland at greater risk than ever. Pride is an important moment for LGBTI people and their allies to celebrate their love. It is also a protest against exactly the kind of discrimination that the Polish authorities and are gradually writing into the law. This proposal, which is part of a wider crackdown on LGBTI rights, has no place in any parliament. We call on Polish MPs to recognize that love is love and reject this hateful proposal, which is discriminatory to its core, said Niels Misnix. The bill originated as a citizen's legislative initiative, which can be submitted to parliament if it receives signatures from at least 100,000 citizens. If passed, the bill would ban pride, parade, uh, pride parades and any other public gatherings that promote non-heterosexual orientations and diverse gender identities. What time it is? Oh my God, how fast. Okay, three minutes. Do you want questions, LGBT free zones, or just some personal history, or maybe something positive? If it's not positive, you don't have to say something positive. <laughs> I, I do have one. Okay, so um, I think you know every, uh, everything, almost everything about LGBT free zones, mm, but I, I can just, um, some fun fact, no, I don't, okay, I do have one, um, and it's also my personal story, because for me, it all started as I remember in April 2019 when the Lublin Voivodeship Assembly voted on this resolution, and I had a speech there in which I told politicians how inca incompatible with human rights is the resolution, how offensive it is to us, and how absurd this idea is in 21st century. And I know some of politicians in Lublin, but I did not expect such a large part of the country to adopt such disgusting resolution because now it's over 30% of Poland. And um, 
To be honest, these resolutions have not yet brought concrete results. I mean concrete, I can write it down. Um, but they are in themselves saying to our face, we don't want you. We don't want you to live in our country. And people also felt a certain freedom or even support and consent to violence on the part of those in power. And in Poland, the verbal violence crimes are practically not prosecuted. Um, people can shout faggots or threaten to die and they are not punished for it. Even those who attack physically are rarely punished enough. And looking back, I can see a striking resemblance between LGBT free zones and Jewish free zones. This is a terribly paralyzing thought and looking at the general situation of Poland, it does not seem to be such a distant and impossible scenario. I don't want to you to leave, I don't want to leave you in, in in this you know emotional moment. So maybe I will just talk something good. In Lublin, I work in um, in a gallery, art gallery, and I I'm also a member of the board of Lublin Equality Mars Association, and um, I made something like a um, safe space for LGBTQIA um, youth in, in our region. And that's the only one in, in the West Poland. Uh, but I think there are three or four places like this in Poland. So I'm just really proud and happy and, and, and full of hope um, because this generation, I mean my generation, but um, I think more the generation which is in primary school and, and, and um, high school now, I think they are revolutionists. I think um, the revolution ha have to come, you know, soon in Poland. I hope so and I will work for that. And I'm really proud of, of how activists in Poland still work um, and, and not just s say, we could say, okay, it's, it's so terrible situation that we can't do anything right now, okay, let's just, just leave that. And um, so, yeah, I'm really happy and proud and full of hope that it will change um, soon in Poland because of people who work for that. Thank you.